Let's turn the Bible to Isaac 12 verse 3. So remember what we're talking about overcoming relationship exhaustion. So I'm going to cover both in terms of marriage and both in terms of singles. Relationship about 12, Isaiah chapter 12 verse 3. Isaiah chapter 12 verse 3. Okay, let's read together. One to go. Therefore with water, with joy shall you draw what waters out of the walls of salvation. Okay, good. So what does this mean? Watch this now. It says, therefore with with joy shall you what draw out water from the walls of salvation. So let's I'm gonna be theological. Salvation is a big word. It's it's translated sozo or soteria. That's the Greek or Hebrew. Salvation does not mean getting born again. It's one of the things it means. Salvation means it's the total package. Deliverance, getting born again, getting married, healing, job, everything is called salvation. So there's a very powerful principle here. Is it how do you tap? So there's a well that contains joy, promotion, all of those things. It says the way you pull out of the well is with joy. That means that if I become frustrated, I cannot pull out of the well. So this explains to you a lot of reasons why a lot of people that want interventions never receive them. And they never receive them because they have gotten into a frustrated state. But what we used to pull out of the well is with joy. So the goal of this teaching is not to have everybody just talk about my pain and my pain. That's not the goal. To talk about how I'm a single mother or a single father or how my marriage is breaking up but I'm tired. Or to talk about how my relationship is frustrating me and I'm a single person. The goal is to move you and you need to know what the goal is so that at the end of the service, you need to tell me if this happened to you. My goal is that if this was you at a frustrated state, after the next four weeks, you can find yourself moving a bit and moving a bit and moving a bit until you come to a place of joy. And why do I want to come to a place of joy? The reason is this, because the Bible says, therefore, with joy shall you draw out of the well of salvation. Someone say hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Let me show you another scripture. So I'm just showing what I'm trying to do. So maybe you are here and you're like, oh wow, they're too excited. Maybe you feel as if all of these people are oh, just one minute. All of them have empty seats. Just raise up your hands. We have a lot of people at the back. So ushers, you need to kind of come forward and fill up the seats from the front. Yeah. So we have a lot of empty seats. Just bring them all the way to the front. We have a lot of empty seats. So some of you can feel like, you know, I have big marital issues because some of you, are you, you know, you're single and you're young. You're like, ah, you know, that kind of thing. And I understand that. That's a good place to be. And I love that. But some of you have been through deep hurts. Maybe you're a single mother. Maybe someone. There are horrible stories of people that got pregnant and you're, you know, you're by yourself. So maybe you're a single mother. Maybe, you know, you're a single father. Or maybe your marriage is just really tired. And maybe you're watching online and you're just like, I'm just really exhausted. I'm just really, really exhausted. And I understand what that looks like. I understand what that looks like. So the question today, this is the question today. The question today is that we want to move you from a place. Usher, Usher that is helping out. Sir. Just fill up the, the seats here. Seat, just come up off front here. You just by the side, exactly. So that we can all take all the seats here. So the goal is to move you from that exhaustion into a place of joy. Someone says, why do I want to play in the place of joy? I believe that when you're in the place of joy, you will be able to draw out of what of the world of salvation. Listen to me, everybody. The more frustrated you are, the more you now have a miracle. Why? Miracle happens in a joyful state, not in a frustrated state. And I'm saying so to you because I'm trying to move you. So you need to allow me to move you. You need to, there's no point for you to come to the service and be like, I'm not going to change anything. Then why did you come? Then she can kind of go home. So if you're frustrated about marriage, you, need to, you came here because you're hoping that we can move you. So we're going to suggest things that will challenge you, be uncomfortable, but it will move you. Glory to God. All right, let's look let's do the second. The book of Proverbs, chapter 17, verse 22. Proverbs, chapter 17, verse 22. Praise God. Proverbs chapter 17 verse 22. 
If I'm going to read the King James, maybe I can read the message translation later. So let's read together. One, what, one to go. What does it say? A merry heart do it. Hold on. Did you see what it says? It says, if your heart can stay in the place of joy, you will heal. Did you notice that? If your heart can stay in the place of joy, it said you will heal. It will self-heal. So the question is that maybe the reason why your heart is not healing is because you've unconsciously stayed in the place of frustration and sadness. And see what it says the next thing. See what it says. It said, but what? Did you notice that? It said, once you have broken within, it will even affect your body, talk less of your emotions. And that's why, that's why in this teaching today, I, I want to give it a set frame. The teaching is about how to move you. And the truth is this, let me, let, maybe, maybe I should say this first. I don't want to be insensitive to the fact that many of you have been to very bad relationship experiences. Many of you have heard, seen bad relationship experiences. But you need to determine that am I going to heal or I'm going to suffer? You need to determine that for yourself. And that decision is what only you can make for you. I can only help you. I can give you the drugs, but you can use yourself. Someone say hallelujah. All right. So now we've laid the foundation. Now you know what we're trying to do. What we're trying to do over the next few weeks is to move you from a state of frustration into a place of joy. That's the first thing we're going to do. Either about your marriage, either about men, either about women. Let me tell you a reason why a lot of people are single, just by the way. Because a lot of people are conflicted. In their mind, I hate men, but I want a husband. Once you're conflicted, what happens to you? You become stranded. Is that not true? Because you take three steps forward and you take two steps backwards. Because in your mind, I want to get married, but I hate women. I, I want to get married, but I hate men. So, there's a tussle. There's a tussle. So, what we're trying to do is that, I understand that you feel the pain, but as long as you keep it that way, it will never work. Hallelujah. Alright, alright. So, that's why a lot of people are single, because they are caught in between what they hate and what they want and what they hate and what they want so remember what the bible says here it says give me the message translation of this verse yeah a heart see it says a cheerful disposition is good for your health it says gloom and doom leaves you what bone tired wow this is very powerful. All right. So, why do we deal with frustration? And I've been talking about that. The first reason we want to deal with either relationship or marital frustration is this. If you don't deal with frustration, you will begin to self-sabotage. I'll give an example. Yesterday, my, my, myself and my wife were talking. And this is a guy from the US. You know, nice Christian guy. And he had told my wife that, you know, I would love to meet any nice Christian getting harvesters and probably can take you somewhere. So, my wife said, what do you think about this person? And his relative was there. His brother was there in our house. And, you know, I said, what do you think about this person? And uh, <laughs> when, he, when, when she said that, I said, oh, that, I think she's a great choice. And I said, ah. I said, but something is wrong. She kind of self-sabotaged because I've noticed it with her. She's about 38 or 39. I said, she's self-sabotaged. He said, my just said, oh, you noticed? I said, yes. He said, hmm. So my wife told me this. Just a few weeks ago, I introduced her to a guy. He said, the moment I introduced her to a guy, a single guy, he said, if you saw the way she responded, I had to tell her that what's wrong. He said, because she's always sweet to me. Then a single guy comes to the scene and she's very awkward and nasty. And she doesn't realize it. And I said, the major problem is that maybe because she's entered a frustrated place, subconsciously, she's self-sabotaging. This is why you don't want to be, this is why you don't want to be frustrated because you will end up sabotaging. Sabotaging comes in two ways. You can become very clingy or you become an avoidant. 
So as soon as the guy just comes or the girl just comes, there's a way you jump and cling. And like, let me tell you something. When you date someone and they're too clingy, it's a bad sign. I never say when they're clingy, when they're too clingy. And there are words that, you know the thing, I, I, there was something I read during the week, and someone says, I never want to be crazy in love. He said, I want to be patient in love. I want to be matured in love. I want to be sensible in love. I want to experience awesome love. I don't want to be crazy in love. The reason why is that sometimes when you're single, some words are red flags. If you break up me, I'll just die. Why does a human being say that? You think it's love, but those things connect to deeper stories. Are you hearing me? So one of the reasons why you want to heal is this. If you're not careful, you'll gradually begin to self-sabotage. And some sabotage will come in a lot of... You will self-sabotage both your current and the future. For example, let me talk about marriage because this is not only for single people. When you're frustrated in your marriage, you begin to anticipate problems. And where there's no problem, you will pull it out of it. You will even say things like, I thought you were going to talk. Now, this is your partner that used to be so saucy and be rude. That's what she used to do. She's gotten some wisdom. She's kept quiet. And your response to that was, I thought you were going to talk. And you don't realize that you are self-sabotaging the peace you have in your relationship. What, what self-sabotage? Where well, you begin to take actions that will lead you to where you don't want to go to. You want to go here, but you find yourself taking action that leads you here. Glory to God. So why deal with frustration? Because of what? You will self-sabotage. Maybe I should get a, maybe I should get two comments about this. I move to the next one. The reason why I love to get comments is that I don't have all the experiences. Someone can easily tell me, I understand what you mean. This happened to me. And that can easily relate to somebody here. Okay, let's get comment. Do you have another microphone? Yeah, let's get. Just raise up your hands and share how you self-sabotage either in your marriage or in your relationship or as a single person, how you self-sabotage. Okay, yes. She wants to share. Where's the other camera? Do we have it? Hallelujah. One minute every sharing. Yeah. 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 Once the trust is broken, okay. we find out that. So, how did you self sabotage that? My own case was that the man decided that he's tired of the marriage and he left. So, how did you self sabotage? What I did had, you do? I had to give my life to Christ. Okay. And being Christ, he gave me a check. In okay. My Thank you, man. Thank you, man. Good, but that's not what I'm looking for. Yeah, that's not what I'm looking for. Okay, self sabotage. Yes, go ahead and share. Yeah, go ahead. Just raise up your hands. Yes, thank you very much, man. The great contribution. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Um, you mentioned being too clingy, and that was me. Like the first guy. Okay, after my relationship. I met this guy and I was single and I felt kind of lonely. And when the guy came, I was very clingy. Like so, why were you very clingy? <sighs> okay, I. I was Did you notice something? She knew that her clinginess at the root, and that's why I said, as soon as I said, "Why are you clingy?" I can't see her video. Is there is there a reason why I can't see her video? Yeah. So why you why were you clinging? Yeah. Okay. Naturally, I'm very very emotional. Very. That's one. And why second, are you very emotional? <laughs> because these are trigger words. These are trigger words. Why are you very emotional? Okay. Mm, the truth is, I feel like I've never experienced love. Where did that come from? Your parents? My family, actually. What happened? <laughs> okay. My family, they're very insensitive 
to people. What did it, what was done to you? Not people, it's you I'm talking about. Okay. Not people actually, to me. Okay, good. So what was done to you? It's quite private. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. But the reason why is that, see, most of you treat is clingy, then is emotional, but all those things has what? Roots within. I want to ask you, someone that is not used to love can never love. Because you can't give what you don't know. The major thing is this. You are demanding love for someone that does not know love. How? So what they think is love is what they saw. Can I, can I do on, on Hollywood? Or Beyonce do in the movie? So, those, so, so some of you here are suffering from wrong expectation. Glory to God. So you, you see her now. So she, and this is the thing. If you come very clingy, the person feels like there's something wrong and the person begins to move away. Okay, can I get another story? I, I want a more direct story. She, she wants to receive. There's a lady in front of that wants Okay, so okay, go, go, go ahead. Yeah. Good afternoon. in my present relationship nothing he tells me I would not want to believe because I believe is, they are all the same so, so tell I'm, me exactly what you do so if he tells is, yeah. if he tells me something is yellow I'll just oh. so if he says at home now you go and check <laughs> yes I'll check then so, he so, says he's so going you, you, somewhere you've, you've been to his house many times just to check right yes <laughs> And if he says he's going somewhere, I'll have to confirm from his friends. Is he here? Is he with you guys? So it's been... It's been I want awful. to ask you. So, when you do this, this makes you love you more or it makes him break your relationship? In his aspect, he has tried because he has confront, confronted me so many times that I don't trust him and he's not comfortable. Watch now. And, and he loves me. So you know? Watch now. The guy has begun to say, I'm here. But I'm not what? Comfortable. After it persists, because the guy is going to feel as if they're surviving my destiny. But the question is, is watch this. I'm, I'm going to show you something because we're going to come to something here. Did you notice where that came from? That came from my past. Most of the time, the frustration comes from bad experience. Either you were personally involved or you heard it from somebody else. And that's what we tell people before you move on that relationship. You need to take time to heal and to recover. So someone else wants to share that there was a there's a lady right in front here. Yeah, yeah, there's a lady right in front here. I believe your story is gonna be powerful. Yeah. Good afternoon, church. Good afternoon. <laughs> so my you know self-sabotaging thing is that you know because of my physical appearance, when guys approach me, I always feel like this one just, is just seeing, looking at me as in physical, like what does he want to do? What does he have? Like, what does he have to offer me? Is it What's wrong like with your physical, physical look? No, like, they're are you just too beautiful very, or not you? Not beautiful, but the whole, no, no, no. People have always like identified me with the look and all that. Oh, you're curvy. Yes. yes. Okay, so they want the, so, okay, yes, good. So, it makes me very uncomfortable and I'm always trying to search, like, what does he want? What do, like, that is instant. It's instant. Immediately. I, that's what comes to my mind. Like, what does this one want? That he's looking for sex. Sex, like, what, he just likes the body. Does he have anything to offer? Mm. Do you understand? Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Why do you think your coviness is a problem? Because since when I because I grew up very fast, you understand. So my parents, I was like, cover yourself. Even like I'm, I don't know if it's right to say in church, but like older men always used to come at me when I was very young, and just because the thing came out on time, you understand. So it has already put it in my head that if a man approaches me, it just it's just because of the body. I want to watch something. When I say frustrations, do you see where it's coming from? Yes. My sister. First of all. 
I think you are blessed. Yes. Your question is like someone that has money. It's how to manage the blessing that should be the problem. Yes. But when the blessing that makes you feel as if this is easy, I think you have the wrong perspective. I don't even. Do you see it as a blessing? Hardly. Did you see that? This is what we are paying for. They are paying for. The reason, let me tell you something. I want to just see. Because some of you feel as if you're too skinny. She says, I'm too curvy. The reason why is that Satan is a wicked person. If you don't have it, it wins against you. If you have it, it wins against you. Which one does he want? What he wants is for you to destroy your self-image. My sister, let me tell you something then. Until you accept yourself and enjoy yourself, nobody will find it. Yeah. Accept yourself. Enjoy yourself. And unfortunately, your parents made you very conscious. Instead of it to make, make them make you appreciate it. They Even now, it's like they've made it my identity. Like anything, like I don't know why. It's just body. That's what I feel. Like people should just calm down. Like it's just body. Like I don't know why people just like to emphasize on it so much. It makes me want to shrink. Okay. Question. You know the problem? The problem is this. Michael, you're not helping me. Yeah. Yeah. The problem is this. I'll tell you. Michael, we may need to stop using the, um, this crane so that we can have better shots. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So we may need to stop using the crane. That might not be effective for us today. The problem is this. You've not accepted it as a blessing. Accept it. You cannot determine how people will respond to you. That's out of your hand. But when they respond to you, what do you interpret? You say, wow, because I'm so blessed of the Lord. Because I'm so blessed of the Lord. That's how you interpret it. Because I'm so blessed of the Lord. But how do you interpret it? Ah, they are looking for my body. No. I'm so, there's something that God has given me that is calling all their attention. So, you see now, you were, you were about to cry some minutes ago. Is that not true? The reason why is that you look at your body and instead of you to see beauty, you feel pain. Uh-uh. The Bible says you're beautifully and wonderful. Glory. Remember, watch this now. A cheerful disposition is good for your health. My sister, I'm still talking to you. A cheerful disposition is good for your health. Gloom and doom will leave you bone dry. All right. So that's the first thing. So the reason why you want to do frustration is because it will sabotage both your current and your future. Either you're single or you're married, it's going to sabotage. The second thing why you want to deal with it is this. It will, and which is what she has said, it will make you negative about today and the future. Please don't come back and sit down. Just stay where you are. It will make you negative about your future. Let, let me just actually... You may need to just take down the camera and use it like that, you know, if we need to do that, if it's possible. If not, it's okay. Yeah. Or maybe we need to remove, reduce one of the master cameras to one. I'm not sure what you need to do. Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah. Michael, you need to make a decision. I'm waiting on you. You're going to distract me, whatever you're doing. But it, it doesn't have a cable, so how will you run that? Because I'm very concerned about all the thousands of people watching online. Praise God. So let's keep teaching now. Let's keep teaching. Yeah. So this is what the Bible says now. This is what the Bible says now. So the Bible says, um, so this is what I said. Why do you do with frustration? Number one, it will sabotage both the current and the future. The second thing is that it will make you negative. If you're frustrated, you will become negative about today and tomorrow. You become gradually negative about today and tomorrow. 
the third thing is this that frustration will yield frustration frustration so this is the problem with the marriage when a partner is frustrated what do you do you will pass the frustration to your partner and you need to ask yourself when you're frustrated is it do you want to pass frustration or you want to resolve frustration Have you noticed when you're angry, you pass the anger down to someone else? It doesn't solution. The thing is that when you're angry, what you want is peace. Give peace. But most of us, because of how we're raised, we find ourselves giving the same frustration and anger. And the frustration and anger comes back to... And this is the reason why you don't want to be frustrated. Because the Bible says every seed will produce after its own order. If you have frustration, you will pass the frustration down to someone else okay so let's let's go deeper now I'm, I'm trying to close yeah symptoms of frustration for married people when a, when a marriage is frustrated the home is no longer a safe place the home becomes an office where you just go to sleep and come back who knows what I'm talking about thank you the home is never a safe place it's a place you just go. So the same way you go to the office to work, the home is a place you keep the children or you keep your things, you sleep, and you run out as soon as possible. For single people, what does frustration look like for single people? This is what it looks like. When single people, when single people, yeah, when single people are frustrated, the major thing you see is a lack of interest. Who is there right now? Yeah, give them the microphone. Yeah, but you can speak twice. You've spoken once, you can speak twice. Yeah. Lack of interest. I have a lack of interest. Yeah, let's go. Um, you talked about... Um, lack of interest. Lack yeah. of interest. You need to hold the microphone to your mouth, yeah. I think I'm a living experience because um, I was formerly married and then my marriage broke up. So when I was speaking about the signs of frustration for married people, did you, did you, do you agree with me that the home becomes a place, a safe, it's not a safe place, it becomes like an office? Absolutely. Tell me about that. Okay, in my own case, uh, while I was still in my marriage, uh, myself and my ex-husband um, when I go to work I the first thing I do when I go to work I say to my manager I'm doing an extra hour so to her she think that I'm a very hard-working I mean person but she doesn't know that You're I running just away. wanna stay longer and to my ex-husband he thinks that I'm making more money but he doesn't know that I'm trying to avoid any sort of confrontation or argument or any quarrel. Did you see what I'm saying? These are the signs. And, and, and that's why, the reason I'm saying so is that some of you have friends that are frustrated and they do not know it. So for those married, what happens is that they find themselves staying outside the house for a longer time. If they are men, they'll find themselves spending time with their friends, drinking and smoking and all of those things. And the reason why is that the house has become a place of tension rather than rest. So it's a functional space that I go there to sleep. So the same way I go to the office to work, I go here to sleep. Okay, but now you're talking about the lack of interest. Yeah. For, for the lack of interest, yeah. um, I, I just want to draw a little bit back. Yeah, go ahead. So, when I, when I got married, I, I, like I got into my marriage, I stepped into my marriage with fear. With but fear? Fear, like fear. But so why did you marry someone that you have? Why did you no, marry? I wasn't afraid of him, but my background, because I come from a staunch Catholic home. Yeah. So there are some norms, like I see as normal, but it's not normal. So to me, I was like, oh, my dad, my mom must not hear that I want to leave my marriage. So I stuck in that marriage. The marriage was so toxic, was so abusive. The marriage was so toxic, abusive, like my, my ex-husband, my, his family, they were like little things that I would not even imagine that someone can talk about or use it like, you know, 
talk against someone. Okay. They were using it all against me. But for me, I refused to say, I refused to speak up. I refused to let my family know what is going on because I was scared that my mom, because my mom, you know, maybe you might understand what I mean when I say Catholic family. My mom and dad, they, are, they came from staunch Catholic family. And so let me say something quickly. Let me just interrupt you because I want us to jump. Not talking about your marital problems early only makes it worse. That's the truth. Talking to the wrong person makes it worse. The problem is that you talk, but you talk to someone that doesn't look like you. So a single person is asking a single person what he thinks about somebody else. What is wrong with you? So a divorced person asks a divorced person what he thinks. But there are people that, listen, the quality of advice you get determines the person you ask. yourself when you want to choose a boyfriend or girlfriend what do you ask other single people like you and they give you what a naive perspective because they never been there praise god so back to the question of lack of interest so how did that show up in your case so at some stage my marriage uh, officially crashed 2020 and I had some suitors that was coming for my hand in marriage. In my mind, I was like, I'm not interested. Like, I, I gave in all, everything I have in this, my former marriage, but it turned out to be like the worst marriage. How am I sure that this same one is gonna work out? So because of that, I lost interest completely. Fantastic, like, fantastic, fantastic. The way you've expressed yourself, but very touching and compelling stories. How have you dealt with that right now? I need to hold the microphone closer so I can hear you. Um, I've not dealt with it is a good answer. To be honest, I haven't really dealt with it, but I think I'm, I'm beginning to break out a little, like I'm, I'm beginning to open up a little bit. Let you know what I think? I don't think you've dealt with it. <laughs> I think that the time is just not minutes for it to open up again. Let me tell you how to deal with it. Number one, what did I make a mistake? Have you asked that question before? Yes. I so have. you know? Yes. Okay. Number two, what did I learn? I've learned. And no, I've no, no, no. I'm not saying tell me because they're very personal things. If you start telling me, I'll, I'll go too deep. Okay. <laughs> Number three, what do I want? Number four, how do I get it? What do you want now? What do I want? I, I think I'm ready to like I, I'm ready to open up to be honest because there's no point. Cause what do you I, want? Oh, <laughs> okay. I I want a serious-minded person and someone that have respect. I I know it, it could sound crazy, but I genuinely not interested in the material things that were you interested before no 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 just be honest maybe maybe maybe, no, maybe no, that, that's part of it were you no, I, no maybe we were interested bit before no i wasn't interested so why did you make the mistake why did you make that choice what influenced the choice in the first place what influenced my choice again like i said i was trying to please my family because i wanted to marry within my locality and i wanted someone that come from a catholic background as good well. good so number one one, you wanted to marry within your tenets of faith. Great. Look at. I don't. I don't think those are the, sincerely. I would, what's your name, please? Onyechi. Onyechi. Sincerely, I don't think why, that's why you married wrong, because another lady would make those two decisions and marry well. There was a third reason, and there's a fourth one. What do you think it is? The third reason was because of the fear. I told you, I put in fear into my marriage force in the sense that. No. Why I, did you choose him? Why did you choose him? So the question, was the problem your choice or was the management of the marriage? I think the problem... Or both? Both. Okay, so my question is, so you, that I say, what cost it? What did you learn? The reason why is that if you don't know the cost of a problem, you can never solve it. So why did you choose it? Again, like I said, I chose him because... You, you chose him because of faith and your... Ethnicity. Yes. But the, but 
those are not the two reasons why you choose left. Well, for me, it's not the reason actually. But yeah. when I got into the marriage proper, I got to find out like things that are not meant to be issue. So okay. question. So you chose it without knowing what you were looking for. What were your major concern? Okay. Was I, ethnicity I, and faith. I chose him without knowing his family background. Good. The reason why is that, and this is why it's good. I was going to show you a scripture. Some of you, you just have two things you're looking for. But there are other things that make you successful. And you don't look at those things until you enter. So to her, is he Catholic? Because this can also happen to Pentecostals. It's not about Catholic. I hope you know about it. You can just say, he goes to harvest us, and so what? The second thing is that we're from the same place. And so what? Exactly. And you, the reason why is that, eh, listen to me, especially you would have caught yourself born again. Once they say they are born again, it's that black hair card that, that means I can do anything. But remember the Bible doesn't say marry born again. The Bible never said marry born again. It said do not be what? Equally yoked. That yoke is what she's talking about. We're not, equally yoked means you know egg, how they separate, the yolk and the egg separate. He said, they cannot mix. That's what he was talking about. So we can even attend the same church and not in terms of value be able to mix. Praise God. So, so you notice, sometimes, oh wow. A story of lack of interest. Lack of interest. I need a guy. I don't, I don't want a girl. I want a guy now. Because no guy has spoken since. There's a guy where? Or there's a guy here. Thank you. There's a guy here. Or there's a guy there too? Yeah, let, let me speak first. Yeah. Go ahead, sir. Um, let's just say that Is he a known person or something? <laughs> Just a look. You see why you married wrong? <laughs> I'm not yet married. No, no, no. It's not you. <laughs> this is why they married wrong. <laughs> Listen to me. All the things, sing, all of the things you consider are not things that are important to marital success. You head boy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You don't know if he has a job. Mm. <laughs> you don't know if his job. Mm. See, this is why I tell you that. This is why I tell you. Most of the time, media has shaping your expectation. So media says someone that has that kind of voice, has that kind of look, is a very responsible guy. He could be one, but there are people that look like that are also very irresponsible. I, I agree. Tame yourself. What I say, tame yourself. You know how you tame yourself? Before you fall in love with someone, have a list. When it comes, compare him to your list. Because if you write a list when he has come, you will change what you want to write. Continue, sir. Go ahead. So, um, I come from a family of very high expectations. And all my life I've worked to meet up to those expectations. Sometimes I've failed woefully. So, as a result of that, when I enter into a relationship, I have certain expectations. And in my head, they seem to fail woefully as well. Because I was grounded in the structure of Christ. I'm not the kind of person that needs to jump into sexual activities. I am extremely hardworking. So you're the kind of guy that they get... Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Relax. I, I want... Hold on, I want him to speak English. Because I'm no longer understanding. <laughs> so what you're saying that the girls you meet always want to sleep with you. Yes. Yes. And... No, um, just yes or no. Yes. Yes. So that's and why you just lost interest that all these girls want is sex from me. And money and money so i've done i've done my part 
I'm, I'm the chivalrous man. I'm the God. Question: man. How many girls have done this to you? I would say probably about ten, and it seems to happen back to back. Good. You know why I asked you? Yeah. There's also something about you that makes you attract that kind of girl. Absolutely, I agree. Fact, my brother, I, I get you get my respect. Yes. I, I love the fact that you could agree to that. The reason why is that if you keep attracting all those girls, 10 of them is not a coincidence, it's a pattern. Yes. Listen to me. You can make one or two mistakes. After two, three is a pattern. A pattern is emerging. By four, a pattern is formed. So when someone says 10, a pattern is established and it's reoccurring. So um, I did try to change my pattern. What pattern did, what, did you have before? So, the places I go to... I was going to say that. Where do you meet these girls? Because, see, see, see. There are places you meet girls that they also think, if you meet me here, we born. Yes. So, where I lost my interest was after... You know, when you, when you love somebody, you want to give them everything their dreams you want to achieve with them you want to grow with them but yes. unfortunately this generation they want the ready made so i was in a position where i was at a position before where i was handsome but no money and i can tell you now that yep. handsome and money is the same as handsome and no money because there's always someone that has more money than you okay Okay. So, because of that, I have lost interest in even the common communication with a woman. Because and, and, and the reason why you've lost interest is because you've come across others with that either one sex or money. Yes or no? Yes. But question, you, you say you've broken your pattern. Yes. So, the last two people you dated, they were not from that pattern. They were not from that pattern, but they yielded the same results. Good. The reason why is that that means you've not broken your pattern. See, your pattern has a place in it but your pattern has a behavior also in it there's a kind of girl you choose subconsciously there's a type you don't know but there's a type of girl you choose so the place was you, you've understood the place but it's also a type of girl have you noticed it yes and i changed the type of girl and it came with the same results no the thing is that you, you see we're coming now you see we're coming now how did you change the type of girl so normally i would have loved light-skinned girls so and then not just not just that aesthetically i'm also looking at character wise okay right so so let me tell you why i differ with you i don't think changing the kind of girl depend on color of skin not necessarily color of skin i'm talking about in terms of character before i like uh, for the sake of slang yeah i like baddies <laughs> you know but now you like goodies. So, <laughs> so um, I changed it up a bit. But then the problems kind of changed with it as well. So what's, the what's the problem? When it was baddies, it was they are ill content. They are not content. Now, I have a situation of goodies. A good person that does not necessarily... It's getting corrupted because of what they see outside as well because they are human beings they are entitled to view they are entitled to engage what's your name what's, what's your name hola i want to uh... <laughs> and no, then speak no more hola speak no, no more. that this is my voice no no speak no more speak no more no this is it's my voice honestly speak no more oh, speak no more all oh, right right thank you i appreciate that sorry take the microphone from him leave the, leave the camera on him but take the microphone move i want to look i want to see him as i'm talking to him i, I want to look at this i'm talking Ola, should i tell you something should i tell you something you like bad girls not only that, not only that, not only that. Allah, let me tell you something there. Eh? You like attention. Then you like impression. 
this is your pattern and you know why as we were talking i was watching your pattern and your pattern was unfolding and your pattern was unfolding and your pattern was unfolding and i said so watch this now so when you step out to impress the girl also says i have to impress so since she cannot impress with her pocket she impress with because because the thing is that i noticed that so because you're a high performance guy you like impression so the girl comes under pressure and feel as if i have to do more and you go that way i don't think it's a pattern of the girls you have to change i think it's your pattern you have to change Praise God. You guys need to allow me preach, right? Next week, like, you need to allow me preach because... No, 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 no. Thank you. The time, the time, the time, the time. Okay. You have assignments. Get out your, get out your phones, buy your paper. Time, 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 time. I want to honor the time. I, I know that you don't want to go. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know. I want to honor... So... This is what is going to help you most. What are three emotions I feel when I'm frustrated? What are three emotions I feel when I'm frustrated? What are three words I use when I'm frustrated? What are three emotions I use when I'm this relationship exhaustion, frustration? What are three emotions I feel? What are three words I feel? What are three new emotions I want to feel instead of the old ones? And what are three words I want to feel? Let me, so this is my question. What are three emotions or words you use when you're frustrated with relationships? What, are, what do you say? Tell me. I, I want you to say it. Yeah, say, say, say. Stand, 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 stand and tell me. Stand, I want you to stand. I want to, yeah, stand and tell me. Good morning, church. Good morning. Uh, sorry. Good afternoon. Yeah, say, say like just say the word don't say like what? i i mostly like you know when i want to um express myself i just use the f word a lot Shh, yeah i mostly use the f word you use the f word yes okay so use the f word in your mind don't say it out yes use it in your mind just say it in your mind okay you didn't say it the reason why you're smiling you can use it and smile the reason why is that when you use it you find that your body will stiffen the reason why is that you put yourself in a very bad state. And once you put yourself in a bad state, it multiplies. What, what words do you use? Yeah. Who? Who? Yeah. What words do you use? Tell me. Helpless. So you tell yourself, I'm helpless. Yes. Oh, look at that. Did you see, do you see why it gets worse? Because... The predominant, and guess what? Your words create your experiences. So when you say you're helpless, you become helpless. Give somebody else. What word do you use? Yeah. I am done. He's lost. What? I am done. He's lost. I'm done. He's lost. That helps you feel empowered. Yeah. And you quickly move on, right? Give it the, give it the microphone. So when you say that, you quickly move on, right? I forget your existence, that like you never existed. I'm just showing you how the words create into experiences. The one that says I'm helpless, what happens to you? You stay for like one year thinking about him. Give her the microphone. Just act, let's, let it, yeah. The one that says he's helpless, what happens? Um, I just... Hold the microphone close to your mouth. What happens for the next three, four months you're thinking about him, right? Yeah. You see, the one that says I'm helpless for the next one year, I'm helpless. The one that says I'm done, done. Maybe something you can use. It's only going to get better. The reason why is that the words you give an experience will determine its meaning to you. The words you give an experience will determine what is meaning to you. Which other words have not been used that you use when you're emotionally exhausted? The reason why is that what compounds your emotional exhaustion and frustration are the words you use. 
because life and death are in the power of the tongue. What word do you use? Give her the microphone. Yeah. It is well. Okay? Then it is well. Even when I'm angry, but I will just say, like you said, the power and tongue. So I will just say, it is well. It is well. Then it is well. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. What would I? Whoa. It's me, Frog. Wait, I can't find him. Oh, fr oh right fraud. Here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fraud. Yeah, let me put on the camera. Let me put on the camera. Yeah. Fraud. <laughs> it's me, fraud. That's how you know people that I love impression. It's me, fraud. Ask his girlfriend. Fraud loves to make the statement. It's me, fraud. You know. If he takes a picture, we'll be putting it on his stories. If he takes it with the people in the club, put it on his, on his, uh, uh, on his uh, Instagram. I'm just, I'm just okay. telling you I'm going to beat you up one day. <laughs> yeah. Um, good afternoon, church. Good afternoon. Um, so I, I'm someone who hardly likes to, you know, stand up and talk or be the center of attraction. But this particular topic, I feel like it's something I need to throw a light on about the loss of interest. And there's a genre of men on this earth that I feel like people need to talk about. The men that wear their emotions on their sleeves. You know, a lot of marriages, a lot of relationships are suffering because there are men who open up too much or rather seen as too soft in their relationships. You know, men that when they're in a relationship with their girlfriends or wives, they give it all. And at the same point where they feel like they're doing their best, their girlfriends or wife feel like they are not man enough. They let things go easily. Maybe where situations are seen as they're supposed to be violent or react, they're a bit calm. So the wife is somewhere saying, my husband is not tough enough. He's too peaceful. Or my husband or my boyfriend so, so is fraud, so calm. What is the question or comment? Just because so of the time. comment about this for me, Pastor B, is... No, for the you have to keep standing because we ah, need to oh see my God. Uh. Okay, so I'm getting married next week, traditionally. Yeah, and it's, that's nothing for a guy that doesn't like attention. Continue. Yeah. And um, before I found the one, I had to go through this. And I think a lot of people who watch me on national TV can attest to it. Yeah, yeah. You know, I had a bad experience a lot of bad experiences in relationships where the ladies are. So, I what's love, the question? Let, let's go. It's through. not a question. I was trying to throw a light on the loss of interest because at some point I never wanted to do it. You lost interest because work. of that. Okay, I, I get it. I get it. Yeah. I get it. I get it. Praise God. You're welcome. And, and I'm sure his, his wife is just next to him because. No, was, she's not. She's not. Oh, she's not next to you. Yeah. Just, you know, just. Okay, so let me say this quickly. When a guy opens up and a girl feels as if he's not manly enough, it's because the girl has been poorly trained emotionally. Yeah, yeah. And she may not realize it. She may not realize it. She may not realize that she's not emotionally matured to handle that. So I don't put down the guys, I put it on the girl. The same thing that the other way, if a girl opens up emotionally and a guy is not able to support her, it's because the guy has been poorly trained emotionally. Yeah. So I, I don't I, I don't I, I think that the girls will need some kind of training. Praise God. Let's go back to our final scripture and, and let me tell you something. So, so please remember what I'm trying to do. So this is the first thing. When you write those words down, the words and the emotion you feel, what you have to do is that you have to break the pattern. How do you break the pattern? Stop saying those words and start saying new words. Like your head say, I'm done here. So don't be like, I'm helpless. I'm done here. I'm helpless will connect you to it. It will hold you to it. I'm done here means it's over. It's only going to get better, paint a picture of a brighter future. So, see what the Bible says here. So, how do you move yourself out of your self frustration? The first thing is that you need to change your language. That's what I'm going to today. You need to what? Change your language. And let me tell you, language is two things. It's one thing you say to yourself verbally, but it's also something you say to yourself internally. So, internally, externally, you could be like, um, I'm done here, but internally, I'm a useless girl. So, you need to watch what you say. Because the pattern of what you say will form eventually. Let, let's go back and read this together. The Bible says this, a cheerful disposition. And that's why I read that scripture to you in Isaiah 48 verse 2. It says, beautiful for all 
situation. And let me say something to you there. You need to trust God that it will turn out beautiful. Let me tell you something. It's a beautiful... For, I hope you see... You didn't notice that. It didn't, I hope you noticed. It didn't say all situations are beautiful. It rather said beautiful for all situations. What does that mean? He says God can bring beauty out of ashes. That's what I need to trust God for. That I've gone through ashes. I've gone through pain. But God can bring it out of me. But the first step to come out of frustration is to say, you know what? This is the first step out of frustration. I'm here emotionally. This place does not serve me. How do I transit to this place? That is a decision to know I'm here. And the second thing is to begin to change your words. Begin to change your words. What's your words? Don't say I'm helpless. I'm full of life. Amen. Were you blessed today? Okay. Please just sit down. Let's pray.